Good afternoon. First introduced by Jesuit missionaries in the 17th century as an instrument used to accompany liturgical functions, the European diatonic harp underwent several transformations and contextualizations, and in the late 19th century, it was adapted into the performance practices of Paraguayan traditional and popular music. In 20th and 21st century Paraguay, social and cultural discourses have consistently promoted an interest in the dissemination and promotion of traditional music, as well as the harp and the guitar. Precisely, these various cultural discourses have reinforced the Paraguayan harp as a practical illustration of Paraguayidad, or Paraguayanness, an idea that's been systematically embedded in the local social imagination through the promotion of the instrument as a master symbol of Paraguayan identity. Widely used, both liturgical and in secular contexts in medieval and Renaissance Spain, the transfer and adoption of the European harp into the New World um, as a secular instrument, but before as a liturgical instrument, was first promoted by colonists and Roman Catholic missionaries coming to present-day Latin America. Among other musical instruments, the harp became part of the continent's musical landscape. Accounts, uh, for instance, reveal that throughout the 15th and 16th centuries, harps were used as part of, the, uh, as part of liturgical services and for en entertainment purposes at Spanish royal courts and theaters. Being adopted, for instance, by the Royal Chapel of Madrid and the cathedrals of Toledo, Salamanca, Avila, and Valencia. Pictorial studies conducted in the 1960s by Reimer and Milligan share the view that the majority of South American rural harps exhibit physical similarities to those from 17th century Spain, suggesting that the instrument had changed little over time. In the New World, documentary evidence shows that the diatonic harp was associated with the accompaniment of liturgical singing in Jesuit missions, primarily functioning as continual instrument Musicologists Robert Stevenson and Laura Agestaran have established that following European practice, the harp was used during the 17th and 18th centuries in the New World as a basso continuo instrument. In 2000, musicologist Peter Navrot reported that several musical inventories collected in Bolivia suggested the sharing of the continuo part between the organ and the harp in some of the Jesuit missions. And I'm excited that tonight we're going to uh, witness that um, dialogue or sharing of the continual part, organ and harp accompanying um, our concert tonight. Other references not associated with missionary activity also offer insights into the presence and use of the harp in towns ruled by the Spanish crown in the New World. Along with the Catholic practices introduced by the Jesuits at the beginning of the 17th century, a new educational system was taking root in the missions. Classes were offered in agriculture, crafts, music, and Guarani grammar, which, by the way, was codified first by the Jesuits. Guarani Indians and Catholic missionaries gathered daily for prayer and catechism, and music was used regularly during masses and major feasts. Music instruction at the Jesuit missions included singing, instrumental lessons, dancing, and the training of future instructors. And as we learned earlier this afternoon, uh, we have a host of uh, European musicians and European Jesuit musicians coming to the New World for this task. So I'm going to skip over the information that we already know um, from Professor Antonello. Uh, but I want to mention Father Seb, Anton Seb from Caltern, who had served as, as a singer at the Royal Court in Vienna he also followed other um, Jesuit musicians who had been coming to the New World before. And indeed, he uh, brought instruments, musical scores, and the current trends in European contemporary composition. In 1692, just a year after his arrival, he reported the success in the training of future mu uh, music teachers. Among them, and I quote, six instructors in trumpet, three in theorbo, four in organ, 30 in Chirimia, that's a double reed instrument, 18 in cornet, 10 in bassoon, and eight singers, end quote. In the same report, Father Seb referred to the accomplishment of some of his own students, among them a luthier and a harp player. 
and later another uh, Jesuit um, Strobel refers to Anton Seb as the first European musician to introduce to the region instruments such as harps, trumpets, trombones, panpipes, oboes, and the organ. Uh, two years later, uh, Seb based his activities in Japeju, or Nuestra Señora de los Santos Reyes del Japeju, one of the main musical centers of the missions. Uh, this is in northern Argentina today. Besides musical instruction, Seb also coordinated the development of a workshop where natives made copies of European instruments. Some of them made, uh, some of the instruments made in Japeju, traveled to other missions and became models to be copied at other workshops in Peru and Bolivia. These are uh, photos of two harps coming from Chiquitos, and we already saw one of them earlier. During the second half of the 17th century, the city of Córdoba in Argentina became one of the principal musical centers in the region. Accounts um, of the 17th century, for instance, discuss the activities of four very prominent musicians there. Lopez Correa, organist, Tomás de Figueroa, conductor, Andrés Pérez de Arce, music teacher, and Salvador López, the mellow organist. Uh, Córdoba was a city flourishing with music. Later, in 1717, another European figure would come to Córdoba, and we already know about him, the Italian composer and organist Domenico Zipoli. Documents uh, from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries provide evidence to suggest the regional prevalence of the diatonic harp in both the sacred and secular musical milieus of Paraguay and the Rio de la Plata region. Nevertheless, the scarcity of information in regard to specific repertoire, performers, and performance practices in descriptions of the instruments must be acknowledged. Though no documentary evidence exists to identify the exact point at which the Paraguayan harp became closely associated with popular music, it is clear that by the 19th century, the instrument had become a part of the soundscapes of Paraguay and the Rio de la Plata region. After the expulsion of the Jesuits from Paraguay in 1767, the transplanted European instrument, once connected to liturgical musical practices, was gradually transformed in its physical appearance and reinvented in its function to accommodate the musical practices of popular musicians of the time. Although the harp remained one of the instruments used in the Catholic liturgy during the late 18th and early 19th centuries in Paraguay, its role in the church diminished as the instrument was incorporated into the realm of popular music. In the 20th century, the Paraguayan harp first attained recognition in the regional musical scene in the 1930s and 1940s through the performances of harpist Felix Perez Cardoso in Argentina, the gentleman in the middle, uh, who has become a model and an icon to be followed in terms of um, the performance of the Paraguayan harp in terms of popular music. Over the next few decades, the popularity of the Paraguayan harp spread to other parts of Latin America, primarily Brazil, Peru, and Mexico, and later emerged in the international music scene as professional harpists traveled to perform throughout Western Europe, the Middle East, and East Asia. Once the instrument received regional and international recognition, Paraguayan musicians of the 1950s and 1960s readopted the harp into the nation's traditional music repertoire. With the creation of new popular music festivals in the 1970s and 1980s, the Paraguayan harp, along with the guitar, helped to evoke and recreate aspects of the various traditions and values found in the rural life of late 19th century in early 20th century Paraguay. The reconstruction period that followed the Triple Alliance War from 1865 to 1870. A major military conflict between Paraguay and the alliance of three nations, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. The war resulted in the decimation of Paraguay's population and since then both war and reconstruction period have become a fundamental factor in the Paraguayan sense of their national identity. These traditions and values, such as love for the land, solidarity, pride, 
carry with them a deep sense of nostalgia for an idealized time. Innumerous local festivals in which popular musical expressions are systematically displayed as examples of Paraguayan traditions, it becomes clear that these are validated through social performance and that in fact express a collective fascination with that imagined and ideal past. Along with words and phrases in Guarani and Jopara, this local language mixing both Guarani and Spanish, uh, we can make a parallel with Spanglish, I guess. Uh, traditional music, the guitar, and the regional crafts and food, and the mate, of course. The Paraguayan harp appears as an essential component and carrier of the traditions and popular expressions displayed at music festivals. In a way, this process culminated on June 8, 2010, with an official proclamation passed by the Paraguayan Congress and signed by President Fernando Lugo, proclaiming the harp as Instrumento Simbolo de la Cultura Musical Nacional, instrument symbolic of the national musical culture. The association of social cultural values with Paraguayan traditional music seen by the general public as a reflection of Paraguayidad or as an agent reinforcing Paraguayan identity is a phenomenon that emerged in the 20th century. And as a musical instrument used throughout the 20th century in the performance of Paraguayan traditional and popular music, the harp was also assimilated into the body of popular expressions. This assimilation process has been highly influenced by the positive reception of the instrument abroad often as a manifestation of a commercial push to exoticize the Paraguayan heart. Knowing that culture seems to be historically reproduced by action, and sometimes historically altered by action, I argue that Paraguayan social and cultural identities have not only been produced and altered by the social action, but have also been created, negotiated, and reinforced in social arenas such as festivals of popular music, in which people have affirmed the various elements of their cultural identity. In 2007, the Festival Mundial del Arpa in El Paraguay became the country's new and official festival promoting the Paraguayan harp and its music. Since then, the Festival del Arpa has become the main musical event devoted to the performance and promotion of the harp, the country's new cultural national symbol. The idea of a new local music festival emphasizing all aspects of Paraguayan harp music, including musical compositions, performance, and instruction, was first discussed in 2006 by Paraguayan harpists Rito Pedersen and cultural promoters Ana Maria Scapini, Ricciardi, and Marlene Sosa Lugo. Soon the projected festival goals and activities were expanded to include harp performers from parts of the world other than Paraguay. By early 2007, the festival was being advertised as an event of national interest in the city of Asuncion promoted as the future Capital Mundial del Arpa, or world capital of the harp, purposefully excluding the phrase Paraguayan harp from the name of the festival. The organizers believe that in addition to showcase the Paraguayan instrument, the event should include other harps and harpists with the Paraguayan harp as both musical host of the festival, an icon of Paraguayan musical culture. On November 2nd, 2007, 12 Paraguayan harpists and six foreign artists inaugurated the first edition of the Harp Festival, which took place at the Teatro Municipal. During each of these evenings, the Paraguayan harp shared the stage with its counterparts from France, Mexico, and Venezuela. The festival included four Paraguayan harp youth ensembles, the Arpas Barrocas de San Ignacio Guasú, the Baroque harp from uh, St. Ignatius, the Conjunto de Arpas Arami, the Grupo Arpa Joven, and the 200-member Conjunto de Arpas Sonidos de la Tierra, or Sounds of the Land. These four groups perform musical selections ranging from transcriptions of colonial music to traditional and popular compositions as a way to reinforce historical and cultural connections between present-day Paraguayan musical practices and those from colonial and even Jesuit times. 
The Arpas Barrocas Ensemble feature arrangements of traditional music in original compositions by harpist Marcos Lucena, conductor of the ensemble. Lucena's musical works were inspired by the music of Domenico Zipoli, another Italian composer from the 18th century. In 2008, at the second Festival Mundial del Arpa, the ensemble premiered two original compositions, the Suite Barroca Guarani, the Guarani Baroque Suite, and Renacer Ignaciano, or Renaissance in San Ignacio, a work featuring melodic phrases inspired precisely by sipoli like melodies in combination with the Guarania, a local urban genre developed in the first quarter of the 20th century. And if possible, I'd like to share with you um, a minute or so of the, um, the Allegro from the Sweet Barroca Guarani. But let me move on to the next um, musical excerpt, and if possible, I would like to play it, um, the full example. It's about three and a half minutes long. This is uh, Renacer Ignaciano, or Renaissance in San Ignacio, and you will hear a combination of this Baroque-like melody with the sounds of the Paraguayan Guarania, and you will know for sure when that comes in, the sound would uh, tell you that we have moved. This, uh, this is by Marcos Lucena. So it's inspired by the ideas of the Baroque. Mm -hmm. And you probably even saw the caption that said Sipoli. That's something that was added by uh, whoever edited this uh, DVD. Uh, this is not necessarily a melody coming from a Sipoli work. <laughs> Thank you. 
the uh, Conjunto de Arpas Barroca San Ignacio Huatsu. Though composer Domenico Tivoli never traveled to the Jesuit missions in Paraguay, actually I should clarify, this is the, uh, by extension southern Brazil and northeastern Argentina as well, his music became known throughout the churches and mission settlements of the region. At first, one may see the development of a Baroque musical tradition in Paraguay through the fusion of European and Jesuit music with that of the Guarani community. However, this idea has been socially imagined and transmitted. 
Historically speaking, the Jesuit colonial missions promoted and disseminated music employing European models. Since the 1980s, however, a few Paraguayan music researchers have reconsidered some historical facts. They have systematically emphasized a strong cultural and musical connection with the sacred works written in the region by composers of the stature of Cipoli, Seb, and others, along with established facts that the harps um, use of the missions were used by Guarani musicians to accompany the liturgy. Drawing on Veit Erlman's reflection on world music as a new aesthetic of the uh, global imagination, I suggest that the creation of traditional music festivals, including the Festival Mundial del Arpa, and the promotion of the Paraguayan harp as a local symbol of cultural identity can also be regarded as an aesthetic manifestation of the local imagination. The continuous growth of the Festival Mundial del Arpa has captured the attention of musicians in Paraguay and abroad. The interest expressed by local and international agencies has been regarded by the organizing committee as an indication of the success obtained by the festival and the high cultural status of the Paraguayan harp and its music. With notable success, 20 days ago, the harp festival celebrated its ninth year. Precisely, it was public awareness of the iconic value of the instrument that motivated the 2009 request by a group of local musicians to officially designate the Paraguayan harp as the instrument and symbol of Paraguayan national culture and identity, which resulted in the 2010 presidential proclamation. After four centuries of a long process of social and cultural adaptation and adoption, the Paraguayan diatonic harp has emerged as the quintessential Paraguayan folk instrument, demonstrating the capability of evoking memories of an ideal past. Paraguay's master symbol of the national musical culture has become a fundamental component in the dynamic process of constructing a Paraguayan cultural identity. Thank you. Most of the music, if not all, is learned by ear. There are a few, um, actually, um, Paraguayan harp methods that have been published, I would say, in the last uh, 20 years or so. But most of the instruction is done uh, in the oral tradition. Yeah. And, and the second question, in the United States and in Western Europe, there's a very strong association of the harp with women. But in your pictures, that doesn't seem to be the case. That's a very good question too. And uh, in the, for what I've, I've seen in my own research, the figure of the male harpist, at least in Paraguay, became very prominent in, uh, in the 1940s and 50s after the work of this uh, gentleman, um, Felix Perez Cardoso, and then other harpists uh, that follow him. I would say there are probably a small percentage of um, Paraguayan performers of harp were women. I mean, they're very successful, by, but by and large, uh, this is uh, predominantly a male type of instrument. That was not the, the case, for instance, in, uh, in Chile. In Chile had a long tradition of women harpists uh, since the 18th century um, or so. There are accounts also from the 19th century that there were both men and women playing the harp. Or in the case of the Paraguayan harp, or I would say it's reinvention in the 20th century, most of the performers have been men. Yeah. Yes, sir. One, one is a question, and the other is a short remark about the question of the women and men in the harp. Um, Naples, South Italy, not Naples, uh, we are the Finger Lakes. <laughs> 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 
there is a very interesting introduction, and we know because we have documents, was normally request to take the position, to get a position as an organist in the church to play harp, because harp was considered a liturgical instrument in the 16th, 17th century. And so we have the most of the music, like in Spain, written for keyboard instrument, like in Spain, is arpa, viuela, and teclado, so instrument, the keyboard. In, in, the, in, the, in the Spanish tradition, in the Neapolitan tradition, uh, composer like Travacci or Maione, early 17th century. There are a lot of pieces written for the keyboard, for harp, and in the same collection you have to adapt because this was not a request to the, to the, the duty also of the church organist. And so this is a question that, that most of the church organists were men and women, even if just to mention uh, Adriano Banchieri, I uh, spoke about yesterday. In Adriano Banchieri collection of organ music, there is also a canzone with the title L'Organistina Bella in Echo, the pretty organist lady in <laughs> Echo. So that means there were also a lady, lady organ in the time. But this was a, a short remark. My question probably is a question with no sense, so I, forgive me, but it's a question and it was, it was in, in, in three in this uh, hearing, uh, Roberto Antonello and then uh, uh, Eric, all the, 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 the papers today. And this is the question of this idea, anyway, for a person from Europe become a Jesuit, follow this strong idea and also to take a distance from the situation, the European situation, and go to a new world and imagine there to establish something, a different world, a different society, even if the reality was a little bit different. But this, this dream of the perfect world, of the perfect societies, or different society that take distance from, from the bad situation of the European uh, social and political and religious situation of the time. And so they move here. On the other side, I was thinking uh, of Tripoli coming from Rome, and just a few years in, in, in the same period, exactly, or earlier, we know in, in Rome the Queen of Sweden, Christina, founded this academia uh, where there was music and literature and everything. And then in the early 17th, 18th century, the academia of the Queen Christina became the Academia d'Arcadia. And this concept, that was developed in the culture in the time in this academia was just to go back in some way to the Arcadia, this idea word, and to find the, the, the perfect word that in the reality outside is not, is not possible to have. So people escape to come here to build up here a perfect world, or people in the academia of Arcadia try to find a person, perfect world. And of course, when I think of the music of Zipoli, of the music of Corelli, some composer of the time, where they take in some way, took a distance from the complexity of the Baroque to go back to a music more based on melody, accompaniment, very simple, understandable. And here, when I heard this beautiful uh, harp music, <coughs> this very clear, rhythmical shape, two parts, very simple, understandable. But <coughs> mm, it sounds really like a Zippoli uh, uh, little piece. No, I, I was thinking maybe I don't know this move here, this kind of music like Zippoli, was a, a, a um, intellectual decision. So, was something that has to do with this? go back to something simple, or was just a, a, a technical issue. The uh, local cannot uh, perform complex music. They have to, to have something very simple. Or behind all this, there was real a dream. A dream to build up a new world, or a dream to change the music in a way that is simple to be understood and it's simple to be performed. I don't know, maybe it's a, a question with no sense, but there are so many ingredients that fit together. This is the reason why spontaneity was thinking about that. That's a good point, and if I could just piggyback uh, uh, on, on that idea and, and perhaps what the, what the Jesuits were trying to establish and Jesuit musicians were trying to seek after in the new world, uh, this concept of the land of 
no evil was very prevalent um, as a type of a paradise in the Guarani cosmovision. And the expression there is uvu maraneu, that could be translated as the land of no evil or the, the paradise. So it, what, it seems to me that when, um, when the Jesuits came to, uh, to South America, the Guarani Indians were very much pe a peaceful group. They were not um, um, facing, uh, they, they did not face opposition as other groups in other parts of Latin America. They were already um, having this concept of the Ubu or the, the land of no, of no evil, which parallel uh, seemingly some of the ideas that were um, being transported or imported from, from Europe. Not. Thank you so much. Or, okay. Okay.